everyone. This is Cindy Harper Speaks, and we have another book today, and it's entitled Bobby the Wonder Dog, and it's a true story. So let's find out about Bobby this wonder dog. How wonderful is he? It's written by Trisha Brown and illustrated by Carrie Porter. Bobby was going on vacation just as his favorite man finished securing the luggage. The mixed breed collie jumped up in one easy leap. This would be his writing place. Let's go, Bobby seemed to say, wagging his stumpy tail on that hot summer day in 1923. He didn't know that he was leaving on the trip of a lifetime. Bobby couldn't know that by next year, he, just a regular farm dog from Silverton, Oregon, would be famous. Today, all he cared about was a ride with his people. Bobby's people were Frank and Elizabeth Brazier and their daughters, Leona and Nova. Two years earlier, Frank had decided their farm needed a farm dog. He went to the neighbors to inspect a new litter. <clears throat> Excuse me. There in the pile of six-week-old fluff balls, one yipped for Frank's attention. Something about the pup was different. How about that? He's got a bobbed tail. Frank said, picking up the puppy, I'll take him. And that's how Bobby got a name and a home. On the farm, Bobby was a spunky puppy and a natural healer, nipping at the heels of cows, cats, and even people to make them go where he wanted. But one time, a stubborn horse kicked back at Bobby. Even with a bad cut above one eye, little Bobby pestered that horse into the corral. Just months later, Bobby had another close call when his leg was run over by a tractor. That'll leave another scar, Frank said, as he gently bandaged the wound. As soon as he could walk again, Bobby eagerly went back to work. There was no stopping Bobby. When the Braziers decided to quit farming to run a restaurant in town, they didn't know what to do about Bobby. A herding dog needs to be on a farm, Frank said, but inside he was thinking, how can I sell my best friend? We have to do what's best for Bobby, Elizabeth said. They decided it was best to leave him on the farm with the new owners where he could run free and continue herding. Saddened, the family gave Bobby extra pets, snacks, and belly rugs. When they left Bobby behind, he was sad, too. Days later, Bobby ambled into their restaurant as if to say, hey, didn't you forget somebody? He had walked for miles, yet he knew right where to go. Ah, oh, Bobby, you can't be in here, Frank said as he stroked the dog's head. People don't want fur in their food. He took the young dog back to the farm. But a few days later, Bobby was back. We need to talk, Elizabeth said to Frank. That evening, the country people and the town people reached an agreement. On weekdays, Bobby would work on the farm. On weekends, he'd stay in town. Bobby agreed too. The idea worked for a while, but by summer, Frank and Elizabeth missed Bobby terribly. So they bought him back from the farmer for three times more that they'd sold him for. When August rolled around, they planned a trip back to their old hometown with Bobby, of course. The trip from Silverton, Oregon to Walcott, Indiana was 2,551 miles, days and days of driving on unpaved auto trails. Bobby was in dog heaven from his perch he scanned the horizon like a king inspecting his domain. 
In 1923, there were no highways. The dirt roads were dusty, narrow, and bumpy, and cars moved at a, a lot slower. Often, the brazier's car was the only one around. Through the long days, Bobby entertained himself. If he spotted a rabbit, he lurched off the car and raced after it. Sometimes an hour would pass before he returned to the road. As Bobby neared, Frank slowed a bit so he could hop aboard. Bobby sure makes a long trip more fun, doesn't he, Frank said. Elizabeth smiled and nodded. The braziers never worried. No matter how, how far away their dog ran, no matter how tired he got, he always found his way back. There was no stopping Bobby running after that rabbit. Through the rocky mountain passes and across the great plains, the braziers drove east, sending up dust clouds through Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois. At last, Elizabeth read a border sign. Indiana, we're almost there. At last, the dusty car pulled up to a house full of relatives. Bobby wiggled and licked as his people hugged and shook hands. Then Frank checked his watch. I'm going to gas up the car now while I can, he said. Back soon. Let's go, Bobby. At the filling station, Bobby slipped off to look around. Suddenly, Frank saw him racing around a corner, chased by a pack of snarling dogs. Frank shook his head. Bobby knows his way out of trouble. He thought he won't be long. The tank was filled. The bill was paid. But Frank was still waiting. He tooted his car horn that usually worked. He cupped his hands and called, let's go, Bobby. Nothing. He's probably gone back to the house, Frank thought. But Bobby wasn't back at the house. The anxious couple drove around town that evening, honking and calling Bobby's name until midnight. In the morning, Frank placed a newspaper ad. He was desperate. They'd have to continue their trip soon. They'd promised to visit more family in other towns. He'll probably show up the minute you leave, their relatives assured them. We'll keep him until you come back through. Sure, Frank said, but inside he was worried. Where was Bobby? Nearly a month later, when Frank and Elizabeth returned to Walcott, there was still no sign of Bobby. Maybe he's all right, Elizabeth said tearfully. Maybe someone adopted him. Miserable, the braziers headed home without their beloved pet. How would they tell the girls that Bobby was lost or worse? Could he be dead? But Bobby wasn't dead. Although in the weeks and months that followed, he would face great danger and he hadn't been adopted though several families would try to make him their pet, and he certainly wasn't lost. As it turns out, Bobby knew exactly where to go. He had decided to walk back home to Oregon, and there was no stopping Bobby. Bobby walked nearly 3,000 miles that fall and winter, crossing fast rivers and windy mountain passes, he walked through sunshine, rain, and snow. He chased rabbits and other critters, but for food this time, not for fun. He stopped at farmhouses along the way, weary and thirsty, but he never stayed long. On February 15, 1924, exactly six months after Bobby was lost in Indiana, Nova and a friend were strolling in downtown Silverton when they noticed an old mangy dog limping ahead of them. There was something familiar about that dog, something about his tail. Could it be? Then Bobby spotted Nova and raced at her. She dropped to her knees and he licked her face, making small happy cries that said, I can't believe it's you. I found my people. Nova followed as Bobby 
rushed into the restaurant like a whirlwind. After a short, joyful hello for Elizabeth and Leona, Bobby sneaked upstairs to find Frank, who was sleeping after his night shift. Bobby leaped onto the bed, paws on Frank's shoulders, whining, crying, and covering his face with kisses. Am I dreaming, Frank thought? Is it possible? The dog's feet were raw and bleeding. His nails worn down to nubs. He was so skinny and dirty, his fur so badly matted. Frank hardly recognized him, but there was the scar from the horse hoof and the one from the tractor. It was a miracle. Bobby gracefully drank some water, then lay next to Frank and slept for hours. Later, Frank fed him a thick sirloin steak and a pint of cream. Bobby rolled onto his back and held up his wounded pads as Frank tenderly wiped on medicine. For days, Bobby slept and ate and ate and slept as he healed. Bobby's unbelievable story quickly spread across Silverton, th then Oregon, then all across America in newspapers. Letters arrived from strangers. We sounded the horn and the dog ran up and jumped right into the car as if it was his home. Own, one said. Another wrote, he seemed to know where he was going. Here and there, Bobby had accepted a meal or a night stay. At one house, he'd searched every room before eating and moving on. Some had wanted to adopt him, but he chewed, but he'd chewed through a rope or slipped out of a new collar. Listen to this, Frank said, reading to his wife. He was always looking for someone and always in a hurry. Frank reached out to pet Bobby, who panted and offered a dog smile. And as we all know, Elizabeth said, there is no stopping Bobby. Bobby curled up at their feet. He was home for good. Oh, wow. That story was touching. So Bobby, 1921 to 1927. Wow. These are some real pictures. That's beautiful. Let me read this. Let me stop sharing so I can read the back of this. I think it's going to be beautiful. Bobby, 1921 to 1927. The big Scotch Collie dog belonging to Mr. and Mrs. G.F. Brazier, proprietors of the REL Lunch Restaurant in this city, surprised his owners one day this week when he showed up at their place of business after an absence of about six months. Bobby's remarkable journey thrilled readers around the country who wanted to know more about the Wonder Dog. The Oregon Humane Society in Portland investigated and confirmed that he had traveled about 2,800 miles on foot. They presented Bobby with the silver medal and keys to the city. Letters and presents poured in daily. Frank wrote about him in Animal Pals, a book of dog stories, and Bobby starred in a silent movie. Bobby's feet even appeared in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Bobby got so famous that at one week-long appearance, more than 100,000 people showed up to pet him. In April 1925, Bobby became a parent with another collie named Tippy. She gave birth to 16 puppies, all boys, and Bobby made headlines again. When Bobby died two years later, so he died in 1927. Hundreds attended his funeral and Portland Mayor George L. Baker gave the eulogy. Afterward, Rin Tin Tin, the dog star of 27 Hollywood movies, arrived with a wreath. In 1932, Silverton hosted its first pet parade to honor Bobby with his son Pal leading the way. Every summer since then, the town has celebrated with a parade and a Bobby look-alike contest. Bobby's castle, his red and white dog house, stands over his burial place 
at the Oregon Humane Society's Animal Cemetery. A statue and a 70-foot mural in Silverton pay tribute to their famous dog. Bobby the Wonder Dog. It's a beautiful true story. It's amazing what love and persistence will do. If you like this story, press like at the end. I'll see you next time.